earlier we have discussed schrodinger equation or applied schrodinger equation to three dimensional problem we restricted ourselves to the cartesian coordinate system in the earlier few classes we have introduced angular momentum from angular momentum now we um, switch over to three dimensional problem in spherical polar coordinates mm. Before going to that, first let me uh, say, explain what do we mean by spherically symmetric potential. In general, if we um, work in spherical polar coordinate system, that is the r theta phi coordinate system, the potential in general depends on vector r. The potential in general depends on vector r. That is potential is a function of r theta and phi. That is to say the potential is different in different direction apart from its radial variation. Say for example, if we have a potential um, envelope of this shape, then this is this has a um, angular dependence. On the other hand, in most of the physical problem, if we consider the gravitational potential, the Coulomb potential uh, of electrostatic such, such potential R of the form is B is equal to K by R, where it is. It, the potential does not depend on the angle theta pi that is the potential depends only on radial distance arcs that is to say the potential is isotropic the potential is isotropic but it is not homogeneous because it fall, it has R dependence so such potentials are called spherically symmetric potential metric potential uh, as it doesn't have any theta phi dependence so we shall first apply so we shall apply Schrodinger equation to spherically symmetric potentials and we consider a particle of mass m subjected to a sp spherically symmetric potential the Hamiltonian is Hamiltonian for a particle of mass m subjected to a spherically symmetric potential is in position basis this is nabla plus v of r now we can explain expand the laplacian um, For this, it is 1 upon r square sine theta, then del del r of del del r of r square del del r plus del del theta of sine theta del del theta plus del del phi of 1 by sin theta del del phi plus v of r. On simplification, this becomes minus h line square radial part. We first separate out the radial part. This sin theta r square sin. This is, this is r square sin theta note the uh, change so this sine theta cancels with this so twice m r square del r of r square del l r this is the radial part now coming to this part we see that the only the r dependence is this so we write minus h line square by twice m r square this part this sign there is a sign theta term and
then this part this is sin theta del 2 del theta 2 when theta operates on this it is cos theta del del theta cos theta del del theta and this is plus 1 by sin theta del 2 del phi 2 plus v of r if we adjust the factor it comes out to be h line square upon 2 m r square del del r of r square del del r then this sine theta cancels with this uh, this makes is cot theta and where it is 1 by sine square theta so this is uh, plus 1 upon 2 m r square times minus h line square multiplied by del 2 del theta 2 plus cot theta del del theta plus 1 by sin square theta del 2 del phi 2 plus v of r recall that the quantity underlined in red ink is the L square operator so we write the Hamiltonian as plus L square operator this is the Hamiltonian note that the both the L square L square operator and LZ operator does not depend on radial coordinate r so uh, hamiltonian commutes with both l square and lz mm, this commutation the, that is to say that hamiltonian commutes with l square operator and it also commutes with lz operator if there were theta phi dependence on v of v then this condition would not be satisfied that is to say for spherically symmetric potential hamiltonian commutes with both l and l square so we can have a simultaneous eigenvalue sorry simultaneous eigenfunction of of Hamiltonian L square and LZ we know beforehand that this operator this two operator has a common eigenfunction YLM of theta phi so, so to say, uh, the total wave function of a particle when subjected to a spherically symmetric potential is can be written as then it will have some art dependence and the angular dependence is taken care of by the spherical harmonics so with this mm, we write it as the final form minus h line square by 2 um, r square del del r of r square del r 
plus L square operator twice M R square plus V of R is the potential Hamiltonian. So our aim is to find uh, solve the soil injury equation, time independent soil injury equation. Firstly, we write the with uh, the time independent soil injury equation as H psi is equal to E psi. Fair psi of r as explained below is written as r theta phi this is as per separation of variable technique is written as r keep a space blank for it and then y l m of theta phi and this wave function is the simultaneous wave uh, this is one eigenvalue equation and the other two eigenvalue equation is L square operating on psi of R will give you L into L plus 1 H line square psi of R and LZ operating on psi of R gives you MH cross psi of R. Obviously, psi will have in L dependence and as well and other dependencies too. So you can write it as E N L I, sorry E L M L M. So this is actually E L M. L M dependence is clear from here, and E dependence will come, will be obvious soon. If we apply this wave function on the Hamiltonian, firstly, the spherical harmonic will not be operated by the R dependences, so they will come on the left hand side. So we will have minus h line square by 2 m r square y l m of theta phi then the radial dependences this is d d r operating on r square d r d r i am keeping a space here <coughs> then we will have uh, this term for this term we write l into l plus 1 h line square by twice m r square y l m of theta phi times r of r We have just applied this solution to this. First thing is that when uh, this radial uh, or differential operator does not operate on y YLM, so YLM is taken out. So this operates only on the radial part that is on R. So it is R and there is no need of any writing uh, partial derivative anymore. Then uh, this L square operates on the radial angular part and yields this value. So this is this and this is the uh, total part. And since V is dependent, V has only R dependence, it is this form. And for non-trivial solution, we can divide either side by YLM. So we get the equation like this.
now you see that the r equation depends on l as well as in energy so we write it as e r e l so the um, here we write the r dependence as this this is the r dependence so this is the radial equation so for spherical is symmetric for potential uh, the three dimensional solid injury equation reduces to this part now um, one more condition has to be satisfied at r is equal to 0 at r is equal to 0 the wave function must be finite wave function must be finite so uh, to ensure this we write the radial equation as this r e l of r is equal to u e l of r by r with u e l at 0 is equal to 0 so at the origin the wave function is of the form 0 by 0 which is a finite so to ensure uh, this dependence we use um, this substitution and uh, go, go for the solution so del del r del small r um, to save labor of writing we are at present dropping the subscript oh okay let me keep the subscript r e l by d r is equal to d d r operating on u e l by r so this is one upon r d u l d r minus one upon r square u of e l which we write as one upon r u of e l prime minus one upon r square u of e l note that there is r square term so uh, ddr operating on r square d l is equal to ddr operating on this quantity multiplied by r square so this is r u e l prime minus u of e l when firstly when it op ddr operates on this it is r u l of its second derivative plus u of e l first derivative and when this term is differentiated it is u e l prime so the all together it is r u e l double prime hmm. so if you plug all these things into this equation so the, this equation with the help of all these three equations becomes minus h line square upon 2 m r square then the derivative term which is simply r u of e l double prime plus this term r e l is replaced by u so this is l into l plus 1 h line square twice m r square plus v of r minus e whole thing operate on 
this r dependence is 1 by r here is also 1 by r so if we cancel this becomes minus h line square by 2yzn u e l double prime plus v effective of r times u l of r is equal to e times u e l this is the resulting differential equation this differential equation looks very much like the Schrodinger equation in one dimension when subjected to a potential v effective let me come to this part so the Schrodinger equation now uh, with the uh, now so becomes minus h line square by twice m d2 u of el dr2 plus v effective r operating on u Here we have used few things. Firstly, which is, firstly is the R E L of R has now become U E L of R by R, the reduced uh, radial wave function. And the V effective is defined as V of R mine plus l into l plus 1 h line square by twice m r square this is the effective potential let me explain what is the effective potential ah uh, for l is equal to 0 this this potential is a no note that this potential is always positive so it is a this is termed as century Fugal barrier potential barrier because it is always positive that is repulsive this is this potential is repulsive for L is equal to 0 the potential is 0 for non-zero values of L uh, the potential provides a barrier pot barrier potential that prevents the particle from coming to the region r is equal to 0 <coughs> and vr is the potential to which the particle is subjected to you note know that 1 by r potential uh, has an infa is an infinite range potential that is if we plot potential in this axis and r this v of 1 by r potential has a long range this is 1 by r potential as for example um, coulomb potential the magnitude of coulomb potential say this is the r is equal to 1 one line this is r0 for this is 1 by r square potential it is a finite range potential at r is equal to 0 1 by r and 1 by r square potential are the same for r less than uh, r less than 1 r less than 1 it is more um, greater in magnitude than this uh, but it is a short range potential it dies off um, after certain distance uh, it doesn't have long range as Coulomb potential. If we consider the potential V to be an attractive potential, V of R is minus J e square upon 4 pi epsilon naught R, the Coulomb potential, if we assume this attractive Coulomb potential. Then the plot will be like this. This is the zero level of potential. This is zero. 
coulomb potential goes to minus infinity as r is equal to 0 and approaches this 1 by r potential is always positive at small separation this part dominates so this is minus 1 upon r and this is 1 by r square potential so what is the resultant potential resultant potential uh, at small values of r it is the dominant part so the potential will be attra repulsive at small separation and will be will approach to the coulomb potential at long distances so this is the effective potential when v is coulomb potential so this coulomb the centrifugal barrier potential uh, prevents the electron in the case of hydrogen atom from coming to the nuclear coming down to the nucleus and for l is equal to zero there is no centrifugal potential the potential is of the short in that case the uncertainty principle prevents the electron from coming into the um, nucleus now the summary that we have done so far is that the for spherically symmetric potential the Schrodinger time independent Schrodinger equation can be uh, reduced to a very simple form of this it is the effective one dimensional potential uh, now the uh, question arises where, uh, where, uh, regarding the validity of this equation. It can be shown that if V of R is of the form 1 by R or some higher power, uh, 1 by R form, then at least in this form, then R times V of R goes to 0 is finite as r tends to infinity then this uh, this equation can be solved and u of e l of r will have a variation r to the power l plus 1 uh, let me see uh, show you the uh, fact that let B of R B analytic so it can be expanded in the form uh, up to the power um, this M can N plus I where this is sum is equal to 0 to infinity and b0 is not equal to 0 and n uh, as for our assumption is taken to be greater than 1. In that case uh, it, this equation becomes b i r to the power n plus i plus l into l plus 1 twice m r square Now you see that r is equal to 0 is a removable singular point, is a removable singular point because if we this term diverges, uh, this term uh, di uh, diverges but when it is multiplied by r square it does not have any divergence. So as per uh, Provenius Fuchs theorem we can write.
सी के आठ टू दी पावर एस प्लस के बद सी जीरो नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो वेर एस इज द इंडेक्स टू बी डिटार्मेंट वेन वी पुट दिस इक्वेशन हेयर वी गेट माइनस एच लाइन स्क्वायर बाय टू आई जेम समेशन ओवर के सी के एस प्लस के एस प्लस के माइनस वन आठ टू दी पावर एस प्लस के माइनस टू देन फ्रॉम दिस टर्म वी हैव डबल सम सम ओवर आई सम ओवर के सो दिस इज बी आई सी के आठ टू दी पावर एन प्लस आई एन प्लस आई प्लस एस प्लस के देन कमिंग टू दिस टर्म Sorry, h line square was missing. H line square by twice m summation over k c k l into l plus one at two the power s plus k minus two minus e times summation over k c k r to the power s plus k is equal to zero this being an identity and we can initial equation we go for initial equation which is obtained from the lowest power of r in this expansion that is s to the power s r to the power s minus 2 then this term contributes and this term contributes and both the term has h line square by twice m so we are not considering this c0 from this term it is s into s minus 1 and from this term it is minus l plus 1 is equal to zero. Since c zero is not zero, the two roots of s is s is equal to r to the power l plus one or r to the sorry. The roots of s is l plus one or minus l. But this root does not satisfy the condition that u l goes to zero. This does not satisfy that u of e l at r is equal to zero. This condition it doesn't satisfy. So this is not an acceptable solution. So this is the acceptable solution. Ah, uh, in which case u l has the variation u l. Has the variation r to the power l plus one, and you we coming to r e l, it has r to the power l variation that we have stated earlier. And uh, so the conclusion is that for spherically symmetric potential, we need to solve this differential equation with the condition that. U of e l that zero must be zero, which is uh, valid all um, valid in all cases when the potential V of R is not more singular than one by R. Um, in the next class, we shall apply this theory to solve few simple cases.